All right, so my pen pal has sent me a new message about a reference to same-sex exploration for boys being normal when they grow up in something called the Game of Thrones, uh, which I had not heard about, and apparently I'm the only one. I was disappointed with the reference, but I was I was uh, pleased to to see that the rest of of the um, of the of the episode was very pro Guerrero actually. Uh, it portrayed women to be all insufferable. So you look, uh, you look, the first interaction between women, they're kind of bitching and sniping at each other. Uh, one of them doesn't know how to skin rabbits properly, so they just start quarreling over that. Makes no sense. Uh, then there's a jealous woman who literally says, uh, if you cheat on me, I will wear your cock around my neck. So that's very lovely. Uh, that's the next. Uh, we have uh, another woman who's shooting arrows at uh, effigies of apparently boyfriends past. So, so that's good. And then you have a bossy woman who is literally on a high horse. Literally, she is sitting on a high horse. Okay. So I, I think the implication here is that if if most women are like this, you might as well try a guy, right? So I, and that was all in the first 15 minutes, okay? At the 35 minute marker, we come across the actual reference. Um, and it's, it's, it's a scene where apparently the uh, main hag, who is yet another insufferable woman, uh, implies that the, the guy that she's talking to has had same sex relationships when he was younger. He fervently denies this, and he's kind of angry about it. And it's meant to be negative, just like, uh, you know, it's meant to be negative today, that if you imply that somebody had sex uh, with another man, even as a young man, that still is wrong and, and all that kind of nonsense. And this is what is referred to as situational homosexuality. Uh, you can read about my take on situational homosexuality in chapters 7 and 8 on Grero.com. Uh, but the point is, uh, the point of situational homosexuality is you have all this counter evidence against the notion that mo the vast majority of men are exclusive heterosexuals. So you have all these counter uh, examples, which you can see here as well, and you have to backpedal furiously and say, oh, none of those are real examples because they contradict the sexual orientation theories that we hold today, namely that very few men are attracted to other men, even on, uh, even, even bisexuals included, okay? Uh, and there, the situational homosexuality generally comes in two flavors. There's the one that applies to adolescents and there's the one that applies to adults. The adolescent uh, situational homosexuality is, well, you know, they had sex, but it's experimentations, it's hormones, and they're horny. The adulthood one generally used against people who are in an all-male setting, like in prison or the military. And, you know, it's, oh, there's a lack of women, so you have to have sex with men, obviously. You know, that makes so much sense. And no, it does not. It makes absolutely no sense, because what you're saying is that a real heterosexual... Uh, given if they're horny enough, and that they and that there's an a, or there's an absence of women, they will have sex with men, and they favor having sex with men in the absence of women, or if they're really horny, as opposed to not having sex with men. So the preference of a real heterosexual is to have sex with a man versus not having sex with a man. That makes absolutely no sense. A real heterosexual should never willingly have sex with another man. Okay, like not in the absence of women, never, 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 never. And the other thing that people forget is, well, what about masturbation? I mean, even if there's no women, even if you're really horny, if you're a heterosexual, just wank off and think about a woman. Why would you ever need to have sex with another man? And it seems as though, I mean, it doesn't seem as though it is, that the role of situational uh, homosexuality is to sweep under the rug and ignore the contradictions of men having sex with other men. Because again, if, if a lot of men are having sex with a lot of other men, then the current sexual orientation theories that say only a small minority of the population is attracted to men, that goes by the wayside, okay? So the role of situational, homosexu uh, situational homosexuality is to just ignore the counter-evidence against the current sexual orientation theories.
And I think that's a good place to end.